Shall we begin? Why would a good God allow suffering to exist? Suffering to exist. Does God really exist? Really exist. Let's begin. Why did God command the deaths of so many people in the Bible? People in the Bible. Why does God remain so hidden? Remain so hidden. Welcome to the third degree. I'm Sule Prince and I'm here with Dr. Tony Casa. Dr. Casa, we seem to be living in a world that is changing rapidly. We're hearing terms being uh, coming about. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything seems to be um, social justice. Um, everything seems to be racist. Uh, we hear about political correctness. What do you really think is happening in society and where is this all coming from? Well, the, the word social justice, cultural Marxism, progressivism, uh, critical race theory. Uh, these words all come from a worldview that is uh, rooted actually in Marxism. And if we look at uh, classical Marxism or communism that Karl Marx espoused, uh, Karl Marx uh, argued that all of history is based on power struggles. It's based on a, a tension between the oppressor and the oppressed. And in the power struggles that Marx looked at, he believed that in his day the, the major problem was economics. Mm -hmm. And he believed that the bourgeois or the bourgeoisie, uh, the ruling class, the capitalists, were those who were oppressing what he called the proletariat, the working class, who were the oppressed. And he believed that this caused um, this inequality between human beings. And he believed that by obliterating these distinctions between the oppressor and the oppressed, that he could bring about what was called the utopia or the utopian world. And of course, um, everywhere that this has happened, whether it be Russia or uh, China or Vietnam or Cambodia or Romania, um, Cuba, everywhere that this has happened has led to disastrous results. Um, so after his death in 1883, uh, many of his disciples looked forward to this time when there would be this huge revolution uh, against the ruling class. Uh, and in 1914, with the First World War, they believed that that time had come. They were expecting most of Europe to rebel against the capitalist classes and overturn their um, their ruling classes, the the capitalists and so forth. Well, to to their chagrin, um, Europeans didn't do that. Uh, the working classes actually lined up for uh, war to to defend their their respective countries in the world wars, um, World War One and World War Two. Um, so what ended up happening was in 1917 you had the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia under Vladimir Lenin. Um, but there wasn't this wholesale revolution across Europe that Marx had predicted. So what happened in 1919, a number of Marxists came to the realization that perhaps Karl Marx was right in his worldview, but it wasn't really economics. And so what they, what they proposed was that the only way we're going to reach the utopian world is not it's not economics, it's, it's we need to change the culture. Okay. And so some of them came to be known as the cultural Marxists. Okay. And cultural Marxism is an attempt to root, root out uh, the oppressing class. The oppressing class they identified as Judeo-Christianity, and particularly white uh, heterosexual males, Europeans in particular, and, and those who came from them, the Americans, Canadians, Australia, New Zealand, and so forth. And, and what they did was they created a school in Germany called the Frankfurt School, mm -hmm. and they came up with what's called in, the Institute of Social uh, Research, um, and sometimes called critical theory. And what they did was they believed that through the academia they could bring about this change. And so they instituted a process by where they could undermine Christianity, by uh, basically declaring that everything Christianity espoused and glorified, they would debase. Uh, anything that Christianity found abominable, they would uh, exalt. Uh, for okay. example, Christianity said that same-sex relations was sinful, so they, they exalted that okay. as progressive and human freedom and sexuality and so forth. 
Um, and so out of this came the, what we call cultural Marxism, which is mu very much alive in the West today. In fact, many of our universities, our courts, uh, even some of our churches are being in influenced by this Definitely. and affected by this. Mm -hmm. um, so all of this uh, has morphed into various movements. So the social justice movement is one example of that. Uh, how it's morphed. Okay, this Frankfurt School, uh, a lot of people say that never existed, that wasn't real. What do you believe about no, that? No, it, it very much existed. Um, if you look up uh, Theodore Adorno, uh, if you look up uh, Herbert Marcuse, uh, if you look up uh, uh, people uh, like uh, Antonio Gramsci and, uh, and Lukács in, in Hungary, uh, these men created the Frankfurt School. Um, they were evicted in the 1930s when Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany. They were evicted because uh, Hitler didn't like communism. Um, he was a socialist uh, and the, the leader of the National Socialist, uh, the Nazi Socialist Party. And so what ended up happening was the, uh, the Marxist, the cultural Marxist, ended up going to uh, the United States and set up office in New York City at Columbia University. And then from there, they went to Hollywood uh, to influence the media and film okay. industry. Which, which we see a lot of. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, Marxism, mm -hmm. then we have cultural Marxism, mm -hmm. now social justice. How does that tie in? Because that's what we hear today. Social justice, yes. social justice warriors. Yes, so. yes. Well, social justice, we need to be careful because the language is a little deceiving. Um, as Christians, we believe in biblical social justice. And the Bible does have a concept of, of justice and social justice, which means you take care of of the vulnerable, like yes. widows and orphans, and father, you know the the orphans who are fatherless and so forth, and taking care of the poor. It, it doesn't mean giving them a welfare system. Mm -hmm. it, it means helping them to get back on their feet so they can become productive to society. And so the secular form of social justice is a, is is basically a movement that sees uh, white uh, people as privileged. Okay. everyone else as oppressed and minorities. And what they believe in is that the, the dominant class contains what's called collective guilt. Their collective guilt is that they're responsible for the slave trade, they're responsible for the Crusades, they're responsible for uh, the, um, the annihilation of Native Americans or Aboriginal peoples and so forth. And what they do is they basically say that you need to redistribute justice. How do you do that? Well, uh, the white man owes you. The, okay. the white man owes you a free education. You should get free tuition. They owe you uh, reparations for what has been done in the past. But the thing with social justice is it's only, it's only functional in the West. You, you don't see this in, in China. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see this, for example, in the continent of Africa. You don't see this in, in various uh, countries across the globe. But it's very rife in, in the West uh, because this is where the cultural Marxists set office was in Western universities. Um, it's very uh, deceptive. It is a very dangerous movement because its worldview is no different than that of Karl Marx and the communists. Um, Marx used identity politics, uh, group identity politics as a means to advance communism. And so social justice believes that there is no objective truth. Truth is relative to your group identity. So everything's about group identity. You're not defined as an individual. You're not an image bearer of God. Mm -hmm. You are defined by your group and your group identifies you either as an oppressed and an oppressor. So if you are, for example, a black, well, then you are an oppressed group. Mm -hmm. But if you are a black gay man, mm -hmm. then you are even more oppressed. Yeah, double and, oppressed. And then you come into what's, what they call intersectionality, yeah. which is another term for degrees of oppression. Mm -hmm. So if you are a black trans uh, uh, gendered person, you're even more oppressed right, yes. uh, and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, there's, there's degrees of, of uh, of oppression that goes on. It's a very dangerous movement because while they talk about things like equity, they're not, they don't believe in equality between mm -hmm. people. Because some people, uh, to quote George Orwell's Animal Farm, uh, all animals are created equal, but some animals are more equal than mm -hmm. others. Um, they believe that minorities uh, should, should receive more attention and more rights than white people should. Mm -hmm. And when they talk about justice, they don't really believe in justice. Uh, they believe in equalization. Uh, and so they'll talk about terms like equality of outcome, mm -hmm. which basically means uh, that everyone in the end is the same. 
there is no no differentiation just like communism everyone the janitor makes the same wage that a surgeon makes mm -hmm. there is no differentiation and this goes against the the western idea of uh the equality of opportunity that if you apply yourself and work hard you can become whatever you want yes. a doctor a lawyer an engineer whatever it may be and so the social justice movement is basically it's a marxist movement with with new western labels mm -hmm. put on it but it is insidious it is extremely dangerous it is based on an anti-god atheistic nihilistic worldview that derives from Karl Marx. And so when this type of thinking enters into the church, that's where we're beginning to see some major problems in terms of schism and rifts. Yeah, so how do you see it entering in the church? It enters, it's been entering through the church, uh, particularly through critical race theory. Mm -hmm. And critical race theory is, is, a, is a baby of the cultural Marxist movement and the social justice movement. Critical race theory basically says that um, Certain races, they remember it's group identity, yeah. they believe in races. The Bible speaks of only one race, the human race, yeah. with div diversity in terms of ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But they believe that, for example, um, black people have been abused through history, that um, the slave trade, the, the way they've been treated in America. And so what critical race theory says is that there has to be an equalization, mm -hmm. that white Christians have to come to the acknowledgement that that they are guilty there's that collective guilt again mm -hmm. they're guilty for what their forebears did what they did in the slave trade what they did during the jim crow laws the mm -hmm. civil rights movement and so forth and therefore critical race theory says that you should have black churches yeah. you should have black graduation ceremonies mm -hmm. at harvard you should have black only clubs at the university mm -hmm. so you'll have the black engineers club you'll have the 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 black um, uh, sociologist club, whatever it may be. So, which is kind of going backwards. Which is going backwards, yeah. which is going back to the Jim Crow laws. Yeah. And what it's also doing is it goes against what everything Martin Luther King it's fought so, for. Yeah, exactly. And he said that people should be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content, content of, of their the character. character yeah. So what we're seeing is the social justice movement is not, is not progressive, it's regressive. Mm -hmm. It's actually turning us back backwards back to the time of the Jim Crow laws and the the whole ideology that you should have only a black only bathroom black sitting at the back of, of the bus so it's no surprise that today you hear of black graduation ceremonies yeah mm -hmm. uh, and the ones who are supporting this are actually leftists mm -hmm. and social justice advocates wow we this is a lot so it's going to take another video absolutely uh, but for today thank you dr Costa. my pleasure Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you see, please press the subscribe button right below. And beside that is the bell icon. If you want to receive all of our notifications of everything that we do, press that icon as well. Thank you.